Hi there, I'm Virginia Prescott, joining you today for a segment that we're calling Combating Coronavirus. Our goal is to provide you with facts and information about this pandemic. With me today via Skype is Dr. Nadine Kaslow. She's psychologist and professor at the Emory University School of Medicine and chief psychologist for Grady Health System here in Atlanta. Welcome, Dr. Kaslow. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us. First off, Americans have had just an overwhelming amount of change and information over the past couple of weeks. This week in particular, schools closing, orders for people to work from home, cancellations of events. It's a lot of disruption. And give us the big picture first. Your thoughts on how people take that in and cope. People are extremely stressed out right now. It's virtually all anybody can talk about in every situation. Everybody's trying to juggle to figure out how they're gonna handle everything. People feel stretched and caught between one demand over here, for example, taking care of their children and being the requirement to be at work. People are concerned about finances. People are worried about taking care of other people and everybody's worried about getting sick mm. and potentially dying. So it's a lot going on. I'm sure you're hearing from some of your clients and other psychologists across the country are as well. What are some practical steps, you know, for the day to day besides the big picture that you can advise people for just dealing with day to day? Yes. So I think one of the things is that people keep saying, don't panic. And I think that that's true, but I think you can't just tell somebody to stop panicking. I think some people are more hardwired to panic than others. Some people's life situations are was more challenging than others. So I think maybe it's more realistic to say, to the balance your anxiety to the extent you can, manage it to the extent that you can, try to take care of yourself, try to take care of other people. I think to say to people, stay calm is not realistic right now. Don't panic, not realistic. But on the other hand, try to keep some perspective. Make sure you do things to take care of yourself and other people. What might be some calming tactics that you would recommend for people? So I think that the extent to which you have people that you can talk to and get support from, problem solved with, share, for example, caregivers or you know babysitters or people to take care of your children or other people that you're worried about, taking responsibility when you're when somebody in your family is sick and how you're going to handle that. So reaching out to social support. Another thing is really spending time, even if it's just a few minutes each day, grounding yourself. I know everybody's saying, I don't have time to do that right now. I'm trying to figure everything out. But the truth is, if we can settle ourselves down, whether that's with some exercise or meditation or a hot bath or whatever it is, that that actually helps us be better able to go forward. I think we need to manage how much we're getting information. We are just being bombarded right now with information that continuously is changing. There's updates, there's new news. And I think we need to find ways to get enough information so you know what's going on, you're informed, and not so much that all you do is sort of focus on this situation and the latest specific details. Well, taking in information ourselves and limiting that is one thing. How about dealing with children? Like how, what are the limits of how much information you should share with your children? I'm sure it changes as the age rage does, but what are some recommendations for talking with kids about this who are taking it in and really freaked out in some cases? Absolutely. So I think one thing that's really important is that we need to serve as role models for our children. The more they see that we're overwhelmed, panicked, stressed out, the more difficulty they're going to have. Except for the really, really young children, all children know what's going on right now. And even young children, their daycares are closed, they're not seeing their friends. Um, so I think it's really important to put time aside, to sit down, to talk to our children every day, to answer their questions. They are, as you can, as you said, it's different for children of different ages, but but answer their questions, talk to them in a way that they can understand, try to allay their fears to the extent that's realistic, and, and again, help them monitor how much exposure they have. 
I think it's really critically important to let them know you're going to keep the routines as regular as you can. You're not going to spend, everybody's not going to sleep all the time or just spend their lives in their bedroom. The importance of getting out, even if it's at other places in the home, even if you can't get out too much, but doing routines, having your bedtime routines. This is actually a time when social media can be a good thing. Mm-hmm. Staying connected with their friends is so important right now. And doing their schoolwork, but also doing fun activities, having as much pleasure as they can, even if they're quarantined and in the home. And of course, if somebody that they care about is sick or dies, we need to be there for them, to support them, to comfort them, to love them. And and obviously, if they get sick, just be there with them, for them. Well, as we know, working from home is an option for some people, not for a lot of people. There's a lot of economic insecurity for people here in Atlanta, certainly around the airline industry, the service industry. People who have to go and show up or maybe they're delivery people and helping to get food to people who are staying at home. Any advice for those people who do have to be out in the world? Yes. So I think that it's really important. There, there's been guidelines that emerge that have come out and I think we all know what they are at this time and I think we really need to take them seriously be very mindful about them without you know driving ourselves crazy I think we're all washing our hands you know every time we move right now um, so I, I think that we also need to realize that it's so important that we do serve our communities right now that those of us who are at work and um, helping people and serving people in various ways, that that's so important to keep everyone's lives going right now. But of course, if you're at work and your children are at home, I think that can be so stressful. And so I see more and more now people are pooling resources, sending out lists of low cost childcare, or maybe I'll take care of kids on Monday and somebody else takes care of them on Tuesday. I, I know that people are worried about their children being with lots of other children, but I think in smaller ways, people really helping each other out. We're going to need to have to come together as a community right now, as a city, as cities, as towns, as a state, to really help each other through this incredibly difficult time when things are so unpredictable and, and so scary. I think it's the unpredictability and the thought of relentlessness. You know, people don't know when this is going to end. You mentioned earlier that some of us have trouble turning our heads off when there's a thought of something that makes us anxious and certainly those who tend towards anxiety. But one source of anxiety for a lot of people is financial insecurity. And as we're seeing stocks tumbling and maybe the potential of 401ks sinking, how do people deal with that kind of long-term distress or how do you keep them in the present or advise them to? Right. So I actually think for most people, the most helpful thing, although I understand it's not always realistic, is to try to stay as present focused as we can and to take care of the things we can control right now. I think for people who are older and they say, well, I don't have time, for example, for the market to come back. You know, we have to just acknowledge that is really, really difficult. But I think for most of us, the more we can stay present, focused, and not look at our number every day or multiple times a day, um, but, but try to keep a broader perspective on this. And, and knowing that for all of us, this is very tough financial times. I also think that we're going to all have to be making difficult decisions about how we spend our money. Uh, what's realistic for us to do right now. I know taxes are coming up right now, and that's something that also has people worried, like I'm going to have to pay taxes, but I'm not making money. And and so I think that systems need to be as flexible as they can. I know that, for example, restaurants or any businesses, if they're taking in less money, then they're concerned about giving out money. But right now we have everybody's financially worried that we have to support each other. And I think systems have to be as flexible as they can, to be as accommodating as they can and as supportive as they can. Any closing thoughts, Dr. Caslow? I, I think my main closing thoughts are we need to all find a balance in multiple ways with this, taking care of ourselves, taking care of other people, being appropriately concerned, but not overly obsessed. And recognizing that this is just such a difficult and unprecedented time and that we're all learning together 
how to do this. And that the more we find ways and strategies that are helpful to ourselves and to other people and share those and other people can try them, the better off we're going to be. Dr. Kaslow, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Dr. Nadine Kaslow, she is psychologist and professor at Emory University School of Medicine, former president of the American Psychological Association. And you can keep up to date with news and resources. We're at gpb.org slash virus. I'm Virginia Prescott. Thanks so much for joining us.